CJ Abrams was an all-star in 2024, but that was really just the first half. The second half was a completely different story, but getting into it, was 2024 a success for CJ Abrams? We'll discuss after this. You are Locked On Nationals, your daily Washington Nationals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you all for making Locked On Nationals your first listen every single day as we are free and available wherever you get your podcast. And of course, you can check us out over on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. Just search Locked On Nationals. That is where you'll find your daily content of the Washington Nationals. Later on in today's show, we will have a ALDS slash NLDS preview as for the first time in, I believe, 30 plus years, all the series are tied up at one apiece entering game threes today as you've got the Phillies and the Mets going at it. And of course, we'll have those previews for you a little bit later on in today's show. But second segment, Kind of get into some 2025 projections for your national shortstop, C.J. Abrams. What should you expect in 2025? And also, this offseason, I believe it will be one of the bigger stories of the Nationals team outside of spending in free agency. Could the Nationals extend C.J. Abrams? You know, if if you're an everydayer out there, you may know that I have had some thoughts on this for quite some time. But let's get into it a little bit more. Because you think... People can change? Well, they can. I'll discuss that opinion in the second segment of today's show, but this episode is brought to you by Booking.com. Booking.com. Booking. Yeah, the right say can make you a fan of any city, even your baseball rivals. Book today on Booking.com, the official accommodation partner of Major League Baseball. Get the Booking.com app today. So we get this started today discussing C.J. Abrams, in which was a tale of two different stories in 2024. First and foremost, C.J. Abrams was an all-star. Plain and simple. He was elected to be on the all-star team this year, and he deserved it. The first half of this season, his numbers were fantastic. Again, through his first 89 games this year, he had 15 home runs to 48 RBIs, 268 batting average, a 343 OBP, a 489 slug, that was an 831 OPS. He had a 133 OPS plus, and I think with C.J. Abrams, that's really the first half that you want to remember. That was really what we all kind of expected, at least I did, in my opinion here. But getting into it, the second half was a complete cluster. And when I mean cluster, I mean just one of the worst second halves that you could have ever imagined for C.J. Abrams. We all know the story just a handful of weeks ago when C.J. Abrams was sent down in AAA for the final week of the season in which he didn't even play because, by the way, the season was over. And that was because he was at a casino until 8 a.m. That's not good. I think that shows a lot about C.J. Abrams. and. Here's the thing. He was 23 years old. This is someone who is entering his third year in the major leagues. And I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. We were all young. I'm young. I'm 24 years old. We have made mistakes. People make mistakes. Is that going to be the end all be all for CJ Abrams? I don't think so. But also, I do think that is a big talking point of 2024. I don't think the Nationals would have just sent him down if that was just a one-time deal. I'm not going to say that it was more than just once, but if you kind of read the tea leaves a little bit here, it kind of makes more sense. This may have been an ongoing issue with C.J. Abrams. I'm not saying he's going out there every single night, staying up until 8 a.m. in a casino. I don't think that's the case whatsoever. But what the fact is that in the second half of the season, he had a 586 OPS. And in that time frame, you get caught going out at a casino until 8 a.m. for a 1 p.m. game in Chicago on the road. There's a lot of responsibility that goes on to being a big leaguer. But we'll get more into that 
later on in today's show because we do know that kind of unfortunately stole the light of CJ season. But as far as his production goes, what went wrong in the second half for Abrams? Because again, we gave you the splits. The first half compared to the second half, it's just unbelievably bad, if we're just being honest. But C.J. Abrams, I do believe the first half of this season, that is the C.J. Abrams that I expect going into 2025. His first half numbers were all-star worthy. There was legit discussion about him potentially even winning a silver slugger at the shortstop position in the National League. That's how good he was in the first half of the season. And again, that was a much larger sample size than what we saw in the second half. 89 games compared to 49 games. C.J. was great. He was really, really good. Now, what was the difference, though? I think the difference with C.J. Abrams is, number one, his preparation. I've always said this about Abrams. Every time that I get to go over to the ballpark and see batting practice, even on days when it's 100 degrees in late July, early August, C.J. Abrams is always out there taking grounders or getting extra hits in on the field. Whatever it is, C.J. Abrams has always been there doing the most with his work. That right there tells me that, yes, this kid does have the work ethic to be a major leaguer. But in the second half, the swing adjustments that he had made in the offseason in order to allow him to hit 15 home runs in the first half of the season all kind of went away, if we're just being honest. Because he finished the season with 20 home runs and, of course, had a ton of RBIs as well with 65 on the season. But C.J. Abrams is a lot more than that, in my opinion. I think C.J. Abrams, realistically speaking, could easily have a 30-30 season. Having 15 home runs through your first 89 games of the year, that's not nothing, especially when you're 23 years old. And going back into last year, if you look back at the kind of the metrics here, I thought this was pretty interesting. His exit velocity has gone up year by year. It was 86.5 in 2022, 87.4 in 23, and 88.2 in 2024. CJ Abrams is getting better contact than ever. And what does that mean? Well, he's finding his pitch, he's hitting it in the zone, and he's putting it somewhere. So obviously, you want to see a higher exit velocity, and he has gone a little bit better every single year, basically about one mile per hour per per year. His launch angle has also gotten better as the season has gone on. In 2022, he had a 6.8 degree launch angle. Last year, 13.5. And in 2024, a 15.1 degree launch angle. He's starting to put the ball more in the air, which then led to more home runs with a higher exit velocity and all of that as well. His barrel percentage was the exact same from 2023 as well. His hard hit percentage went up by about 5% from this season. CJ Abrams, the hard hitting metrics are mostly there. Although I will say this, if you look at kind of like his percentile rankings, as far as major league baseball goes again, the first half of the season, when you were looking at these, it was completely different, but his expected batting average 52nd percentile, expected slugging 54th percentile, his barrel percentage, the 40th percentile, hard hit percentage, 52nd, bat speed, 58th percentile, squared up percentage, 49th, chase percentage, he's still chasing at a decent rate, 11th percentile. CJ Abrams, though, I do expect a big jump up from him in 2024. And I don't think these percentiles kind of give the full story of what Abrams was in 2024. This guy was an all-star. And in my opinion, you could easily make the case for him to still be your shortstop of the future. Talking about his defensive metrics, that's a whole different story if we're just being honest here because fielding-wise, he was not all that great. He wasn't. His fielding run value was in the first percentile. One of the worst in all of baseball, if we're just being honest there. But I still think CJ can be a shortstop of the future for this team. And if he's not the shortstop of this team, I think you can move him around the diamond down the road. But I don't think that's a conversation that we're going to have today. 
But CJ, while it was a weird kind of sticky wicket season, the big overwhelming question entering this offseason is, what will this guy be down the road? What will the Nationals decide to do with CJ in 2025? What will they do this offseason? I've seen some people kind of even throw out a trade idea. I've seen some people just kind of say, let's go back out there. Let's not try to extend him. And let's see if this guy can get back on track. But I've also seen people say, let's extend this kid. We know that he is a shortstop of the future. Well, what do I think? I'll tell you exactly what I think about CJ in 2025. And will the Nationals extend him? this offseason and should they even try to extend him this offseason i'll tell you exactly what i think but before that i'm going to tell you guys about some of our friends over at booking.com and of course this episode of locked on nationals is brought to you by booking.com booking.com booking dot yeah explore those u.s cities you always secretly wanted to learn more about with hotels, bed and breakfast, vacation rentals, resorts, and so much more on Booking.com. You might just find your perfect stay even in your baseball rival city during postseason baseball. Maybe it's time to taste, test your baseball competition stadium cuisine. Luckily on Booking.com, you can find the stadium stay that's just right for you. With Booking.com's wide variety of choice across the U.S., you can go incognito to all your baseball rival cities and, of course, Maybe you want to head up to New York today. You can find a bed and breakfast and, of course, a nice hotel in Queens. If you could root on your Nationals from there incognito, no one will ever know. Just wear your Nationals Trey Turner jersey, Bryce Harper jersey, whatever it is. You can go that route and Booking.com delivers exactly the right U.S. stay for you. And the right stay can make you a fan of any U.S. city, even your baseball rivals. That is Booking.com. Booking. Yeah. Thank you all for making Locked On Nationals your first listen every single day as we are free and available wherever you get your podcast. So the question that we have posed here is, should the Nats still extend C.J. Abrams in the offseason of 2025? Yes, that is still my goal. That is still my goal. I have all the faith in the world in C.J. Abrams being the shortstop of the future. I may be wildly wrong. Because there are some inconsistencies that we have talked about with other players out there. Kibar Ruiz. We have talked about it with Jake Irvin at times. We've talked about it with Mitchell Parker. But I believe that C.J. Abrams' talent will outweigh his struggles. That is how good this guy is. When we talk about C.J. Abrams, one thing that we didn't really mention all too much from 2024, and one thing that kind of got you could say left in the cutting room floor here. CJ Abrams stolen base percentage was way down from last year. He stole 47 bases just last year. This year didn't really do that much. 31 stolen bases and 602 plate appearances compared to 614 just last year. CJ was not stealing at the rate that he was at all last year, even though his numbers he was getting on base more. He had a higher slugging percentage. He had a higher batting average by one point. But still, he wasn't really running as freely and as loosely as he was in years past, especially for a team that was pretty damn aggressive like the Nationals. But by the way, it was also kind of disaster running to bases that we'll talk a lot about this offseason. But I still think C.J. Abrams is going to be your shortstop of the future. And when you have someone who has the potential of a 30-30 kind of season, 30 home runs and 30-plus stolen bases, which Abrams could do for the next 10 years, in my opinion, you lock that guy up. And some people may say, well, how are you going to fit this guy in a roster filled with a bunch of prospects down the road who will be coming up over the next few seasons, a team that has money to spend, how can you fill C.J. Abrams in that shortstop role with such poor defensive metrics? And we have seen him not really make the routine plays at a consistent rate that you would like him to do. Well, sitting here, I'm not all too convinced that he is going to be your shortstop of the future. But I am convinced of the fact that he will find a place on the diamond to play 162 games 
and excel at that. Whether it's at shortstop, whether it's at second base, left field, right field, center field, I couldn't tell you where. But CJ will fit wherever he wants on this diamond. He is way too good at the plate, and he has the potential to be a lot better at the plate as well. I think with C.J. Abrams' work ethic, you will see the 2024 kind of boo-boo on the season, the cut that kind of, or the scab that left us all kind of looking at it being like, are we sure about this? I think that question mark will be left to the side. I expect a big 2025 from C.J. Abrams. I do. And I think Abrams will put all the questions to bed about him being prepared, about him staying out gambling, about his struggles in the second half. Was it to do with him going out every night? I don't think it was. And I don't think that'll be a concern down the road. If it is a concern down the road, then we've got to have a bigger discussion about this. But at this point in time, I don't think it will be. He's 23 years old, man. This guy will figure it out. If I'm the Nationals, again, you have to pounce on this opportunity. Because do you remember just a few months ago, right around, right before the All-Star break, when he was first an All-Star, I was yelling about this, saying, why haven't the Nationals extended C.J. Abrams up to this point? Why have you not locked this guy up for the future? He is playing it himself to be one of the highest paid shortstops in all of baseball right now. And you have let this window go. Now, we don't know what the Nationals have done behind the scenes. We don't know if they have tried to kick the tires on an extension. I'm sure they have, which, by the way, any smart GM would try to do that at this point. But now, luckily for you, C.J. Abrams' numbers look a lot differently in the second half. I'm willing to bet his agency, Rock Nation Sports, will probably look at that a little bit differently now. CJ himself might look at that a little bit differently. I think that price tag went down a little bit. It did. And if the Nationals, if they try to extend him for, let's say, $200 million over the next eight, 10 years, I think that would be a very smart contract to give out. I would do it in a heartbeat. Sign me up today. That's how good I think Abrams can be. And again, the way that the shortstop market works, in five years down the road, that's not going to be that much money for a shortstop. And again, this guy hasn't even hit his prime. He just turned 24 years old a few days ago. He is a young puppy in Major League Baseball. I expect this 2025 to be a breakout season for Abrams. I expect him to put it all together. And by the way, <clears throat> it's not really an expectation, but the time is now. That's just what it is. CJ and what he has done, it's all been good, but you would like to see a little bit more. And I think 2025, he will realize that because again, you have seen the talent on display here. The Nationals have seen it. We have all seen it. He can do it. It's just a matter of putting this all together. And in 2025, the patience will probably run out here. I was not expecting some massive breakout in 2024 the way that we saw with Abrams I was not expecting an all-star kind of season but that's what happened and Abrams did exactly that he broke out in the first half again through those 89 games he was incredible and his numbers they completely fell off in the second half to god knows what but one thing is for sure is I am extending Abrams a hundred times out of a hundred this offseason because I am betting on the fact that his talent will outweigh kind of the inconsistencies that we have seen over the last few seasons. This guy will put it together. He will absolutely put it together. And in my opinion, he won't just be an all-star once. He'll be an all-star twice, a third time over and a fourth time over. And I think he's going to be that good. And to have someone like James Wood and Dylan Cruz and Brady House some point next season and whoever we spend on in free agency or make a trade or name that Nats prospect who comes up and makes an instant impact for this Nationals team that's going to help you in a big way so if I was if I was Davey Martinez or Mike Rizzo really who makes all these decisions 
extend CJ Abrams and never look back. This guy will break out in 2025. And I don't want to be caught looking behind us saying, why did we not extend him? Or why did we not try to extend him? This guy will break out and he will be your shortstop of the future starting in 2025. So thank you all for making Locked On Nationals your first listen every single day as we are free and available wherever you get your podcast. Now, let's get into ALDS slash NLDS preview as, of course, you have got to be kidding me with these playoffs wild so far. Before we get into it, I'm going to tell you guys about our friends over at FanDuel. Hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live by play by play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets last night on Monday Night Football. I just had a hunch that Patrick Mahomes would not really do all too great. I took the under in the passing props, and that hit as well. But I also had an Xavier Worthy anytime touchdown prop. I also had a Juju Smith over on receiving yards as he has been the hot candidate to replace Rasheed Rice with them. And of course, if you haven't joined FanDuel, well, you can today at FanDuel.com and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Again, you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Now, I'm going to tell you guys about some of our very good friends as well over at Game time and game time, you all know about it. Game time is the best ticket marketing app. And of course, they have new features called game time picks. It makes getting tickets for your favorite live event even easier. And game time picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats. So you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. And of course, I can tell you guys about the super deal that I got on this weekend's game against the Ravens. I will be there rooting on the commanders. And I got the super deal. As you can see, game time picks, they have curate to save more on sports, concerts, comedy theater, and of course, commanders games as well. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-M-L-B for $20 off. Download the Game Time app. Create that account. Again, use code locked on MLB. Download Game Time today. What time is it? It is Game Time. Now we get back into it with the ALDS and NLDS resuming today with you've got just a wild postseason so far. The Dodgers and the Padres tied up one apiece. You've got Wa Michael King against Walker Bueller tonight at 9.08 Eastern time. Phillies and the Mets at 5.08 p.m. tonight with Aaron Nola and Sean Manaya on the bump. This is going to be just an incredible night of baseball coming your way. I don't know what to expect completely in this Phillies-Mets series. Because both these guys have kind of had inconsistent 2024s. And also on the flip side of it, with the Dodgers and the Padres series, it's late night baseball. It starts at 9.08 tonight. But even then, that has been a must-watch series from the get-go. I'm not here to tell you that you should be out there trying to stay up all night long. But you also kind of should be. Because these games have been incredible to watch. The theater of this, I don't know if people saw, but the Dodgers are obviously the most talented team in all of baseball. It's very clear and obvious. But the, this little meddling Padres team, who, by the way, statistically have been the best team in all of baseball over the last few months here, they can't knock them. And now they're in San Diego, which is a very hostile environment to play in, which we all know, by the way. That's going to be a very tough one for the Dodgers to win. Walker Buehler, who hasn't pitched in the postseason for the last few years, has a 5-3 ERA in the regular season so far, has not looked himself. What do you do? This feels as if it's going to be a three-inning start for Walker Buehler tonight. And then you go against Michael King, who has been the Padres' ace. 
And the other day, he proved why he was the Padres ace in 2024. This guy is legit filled with nasty stuff. Went seven innings pitch, no runs, only a handful of hits and 10 strikeouts. Good luck, Dodgers. And then in the Phillies and Mets game, starts at 5.08 today. Aaron Nola, Sean Manaya. that's a coin toss kind of game in my opinion. MLB postseason is incredible. Incredible. You have the Tigers and you have the Guardians tied up at one apiece as they go to Detroit starting tomorrow. You got the Yankees and the Royals tied up at one apiece. The Royals just dominated the Yankees last night with Aaron Judge being ice cold in the postseason. I mean, just incredible baseball so far. You cannot miss it. You just cannot at this point. Thank you all for making Locked On Nats your first listen every single day as we are free and available wherever you get your podcast. Don't you miss postseason baseball? Maybe this time next year, you and I will be talking about it and having a good time. But until then, we'll be watching on the couch. And I guess that's the way that we like it. So we'll catch you guys on the flip side. Have a good one. Go Nets.